right, we're going to be talking on page 14 and on page 18 for some rate of change examples, um, just to get you a reminder and some practice. What's another name for average rate of change? Remember, another name for average rate of change is slope. And I've given you the slope formula here. Well, if I ask you to calculate the average rate of change, and I give you this inequality notation, remember that that x value is telling you to find the rate of change between those two x values. So you have an ordered pair of 0 and an ordered pair of 2. So looking at our graph, I'm going to go where x is equal to 0. I'm going to go where x is equal to 2 and find those y values. Once I've found those y values, I'm going to say 4 minus 1 all over 2 minus 0. That's 3 over 2. That's our rate of change, and you can leave it in fraction form. Calculate the average rate of change between negative 2 and negative 1. So again, remember that interval notation is and x values. So negative 2 and 1. I'm going to go to my graph where x equals negative 2, and I'm going to say it crosses right here at this point, negative 5. I'm going to go where x is 1, and I have a point on my graph with a y value of 2. So now I'm going to use my slope formula. 2 minus a negative 5, don't forget that, the subtraction sign's already in your slope intercept form. So minus a negative, all over 2 minus a negative 2, so that's 2 plus 5, and I'm sorry, this should be a 1, 1 minus negative 2, all over 1 plus 2, so that's 7 thirds. Let's practice as we go. Go ahead and pause the video and let's see how you do on the next two examples. Okay, let's check our examples. How did we do? I know some of these graphs are kind of hard to pick the intersection, so whatever you got closest to is totally fine. But let's notice something. As we have positive or increasing graphs, because we just talked about that increasing characteristic, my slopes were in fact positive when I calculated them. This fourth graph has a decreasing slope. That decreasing slope is negative. Well, what if I just give you a function? If I just give you a function, well, you can do one or two things. You can just substitute into our equation. So for example, they gave us x values of 1 and 3. So if I substitute in a 1, what's 3 to the first power? 3. If I substitute in a 3, what's 3 to the third power? Well, that's 3 times 3 times 3. That's 27. Or I can make a table of values in my calculator. And I can go and type in the function they gave me, which was 3 to the x. And they want to know at 1, so I'm going to change that to a 1. And look, I got 1, 3, and 3, 27. So finding those points, I can then use my slope formula. 27 minus 3 all over 3 minus 1. So that's 24 over 2, which is 12. Now I want you to try something. I'm going to add an example here. Let's find this from 3 to 5. So use your table in your calculator or substitute it in, but pause the video and try this. All right, well, we already know the y value of 3 because we found it in the previous problem. 
But let's look in our table for five. So I'm going to keep scrolling. That says five, 243. So let's find our slope. So we have 243 minus 27 all over 5 minus 3. So I'm going to use my calculator for this one. So 243 minus 27. So I get 216 over 2. So I'll divide by 2. And I get 108. 108. So before I had 12, and now I have 108. What is the only constant function, constant slope, that I will have? Linear functions. Linear functions are the only constant slope. Exponential functions increase at an increasing rate of change. That's a huge fact. Exponential functions increase at an increasing rate of change. All right, let's flip to 18 and look at the bottom two examples on number five, these two rates of change. Go ahead and pause the video and try it while I set it up and try it, and we'll come back to check our answers. Okay, I found my ordered pairs while our video was paused. I found my ordered pairs by making a table of functions in my calculator. So you can use that fraction button or you can use parentheses. And I created my table so that I could find those values. And so I had an arrow 2, 3, 5, 24. So let's use our slope formula, 24 minus 3 all over 5 minus 2. So 21 over 3, that's 7, is what we should have found there. This one, I created a table in my graphing calculator. Remember, we go back to y equals to do that. And we use the caret button as our exponent. So second table. And then I just filled in those values. So we're going to have 250 minus 10 all over 3 minus 1. So 240 divided by 2 looks like 120. Double check my math. 250 minus 10, 240. 3 minus 1 is 2, 120. Message me on Remind if you still need help with rate of change.